Okay, Ian. Okay. You, you've been in court today. Yeah. All day. Um, what's this all about then? What's this well, court case I've been? Well, I've been ch charged with unlawfully entering the port of Ramsgate uh, as part of the anti live animal export protest uh, and also charged with uh, assaulting a security guard whilst I was in the port. I mean, basically, what happened was that I was trying to get into the port to get some video footage of some horrendously cruel transportation of, of, of sheep for slaughter. The, the animals in the back of the trailer were all crunched together on top of each other. One of them had a limb sticking out of the side of a lorry and I wanted to go into the port in order to gather evidence that I could have then passed on to the appropriate authorities to, to use to prosecute the, uh, the, 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 the live exporters and they already have a criminal record anyway for animal welfare issues so I was just trying to detect a crime that was happening. Uh, now I don't accept that I assaulted anyone, I, ex I believe I had a legitimate reason to go into the port because a crime was happening in front of me and I wanted to gather the evidence but what the courts, what the courts decided is that I'm guilty of uh, unlawfully entering a restricted zone uh, and that I'm also guilty of assault. So I, I'm amazing. I'm amazed that that's what's happened. But uh, you know, that's what the decision is. Uh, I've been conditionally discharged, though. Uh, I've not been fined. Uh, nothing. Uh, I've got to pay five hundred pounds court costs. So conditional discharge, five hundred pounds costs, is probably about the lowest level of punishment I could have been given. So uh, I think that shows that you know maybe even this case shouldn't have gone to court but my view is i'll, I'll do the same again uh, you know if, if if animals have been brutally treated by the exporters when they're going through ramsgate if the same situation happens i'll do the same again because this is a fucking disgusting trade with some absolutely appalling treatment of animals and, and people need to know the truth about where their food comes from and what happens in Ramsgate with those sheep crushed together without food, without water, without the ability to move, with their limbs sticking out of the slats, going for days on end across Europe to be slaughtered, is absolutely fucking appalling. And that's why I did what I did. I've been found guilty. I accept the, the, the fact that the court have found me guilty. I don't believe I'm guilty. I think morally I was absolutely right to do what I did. And, and as I said, if similar situations occur, I'll do the same again. Because the stand has got to be taken against this cruel and barbaric treatment of animals going through Ramsgate Park. Mm. Also, during, during the call, I, I understand um, you also went there suspecting that the, the, there was uh, actually uh, stolen sheep in there. That, that's right. I mean, I mean, a colleague of mine had reported to Kent Police and to Kent Trading Standards that he suspected that some of the sheep that are going through Ramsgate have actually been stolen and that there's been a substitution of the uh, ear tags that they wear in transport. And again, I, I was trying to get into the port to get photographic evidence, uh, video evidence, of the tags in the animal's ears, but I, I was prevented from doing so. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think, you know, it's not only the question of the cruelty, I think there's a, a very good chance that the, uh, that the exporters may possibly be uh, moving stolen sheep through the port of Ramsgate and there is a complaint with Kent Police, which I don't believe has been properly investigated. No, I understand that they, they're, they're claiming they, they didn't get a report about uh, stolen sheep. Uh, my understanding is that report went to the then Chief Constable of Kent Police by email, Alan Pusley, uh, and that report also went to the Director of Kent County Council Trading Standards, and I was actually at a meeting with Kent Police and Kent Trading Standards and the guy who put the complaint in, in County Hall in Maidstone, so how they can deny that they've received anything is a bollocks. 
because I was there when we talked about it with the police and with trading standards. They got it all right, they just didn't act on it. Uh, go, going back to your um, your investigation of that of cruelty, um, do you do you think you uh, some somebody in the council or someone within the establishment was actually trying to fit you up? Well, I mean, I mean uh, that's the thing that worries me because yeah. I. I I was the only person who was stopped uh, by the security staff. There was six of us who went through the gates that day. Uh, the other five were allowed to get right close up to the vehicles to have a look at what was going on. Uh, I was the only one who was stopped from going to the vehicles. Uh, perhaps because I had a camera and they knew I wanted to take some images, I don't know. But uh, I believe I was singled out. Yeah. And that they, the, the police, uh, the, it seemed to be made obvious that the police and the security guards actually let you through the gate. Oh yeah, we weren't. At, at, at the point we went into the uh, harbour, nobody challenged us. There was uh, around about five or six police officers and as many security guards who were standing literally within inches of me. Uh, and I just walked through behind the last lorry with, with my other colleagues. We just sauntered through the gates. Nobody said, you can't go here. Nobody said, come back. Nobody chased us through the port. It was only when I got within, I would say, uh, 50 yards of a lorry uh, that, that people started uh, trying to stop me making any further progress. Mm. So it, it's really piss poor what went on there. And, and I'm... You know, I'm disappointed I was found guilty, but there's no point really in appealing because uh, the same's going to happen again. Uh, but I, I feel morally right, and I think the, the low level of my punishment, which is just a condition of discharge and costs for the court of £500, indicates that even the, the judge was probably not convinced totally uh, about, about the case of uh, the Crown against me. Where's the security guard? I forgot his, his name now. Um, he, he's tried to claim £700 damages off of you for a, a, a slight push that uh, seems to be like um, one or the other and two, two, what's his name? It just seems to be... Um, it, it, was no more than a, it was no more than a slight push with one hand into, into his chest. I've always admitted that. Yeah. I've, I've never made a secret of it. From the day it took place, I've always said yes, because I felt uh, I, I, I felt I was being threatened and I was likely to be assaulted. And I also felt that, that my camera equipment was likely to be damaged. Uh, and today the, the guy has admitted he was jumping up and down waving his hands in front of the camera to try to stop me filming. Uh, so, so uh, you know, I think it's a bit rich, but it's his democratic right to, uh, to ask for compensation and I'm not going to knock him for doing it. Do you think he was doing it, uh, he was claimed doing it on behalf of someone else? Uh, because it was seems so, it seems my, so... My, my suspicion is this. Yeah. Uh, at the time that this happened, uh, I was a Green Party councillor on Thanet District Council. I was very, very high profile in my opposition to what the Labour Council was doing at that time. And, and I was one of the leading uh, members of the, uh, of the Band Live Export movement. Uh, and, and, and I think that the uh, council's ruling Labour group were actually trying to silence me. Uh, and, and I have my suspicions that, that staff may well have been uh, advised to single me out when I was in the port. I, I think that is a possibility. What do you think of Alan Paul? Well, uh, I, I, I have no opinion on him, really. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, I don't even know why he was in, in court today, because he didn't really add anything to, uh, to, to what's been said. Uh, he was just gloating. Sorry? Do you think he was just gloating? Uh, I, th I think there might be an element of gloating going on by, uh, by ex-councillors. Uh, and, and I think they were probably quite pleased to see my discomfort. And I'm sure uh, what's going to happen now is the local paper is going to be full of letters saying how nasty and horrible I am and that I'm a convicted criminal. I'm, I'm sure that's what's going to happen now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, you're convicted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's utter, utter bollocks, it really is. Uh, I, I did what I did out of my strong 
determination to try to, to end live exports and, and, and also my strong determination to end what was happening that day, which was absolute brutality and suffering of, of the animals. That, that's my motivation. And if people call me a, a convicted criminal for doing that, well, I'm proud to be a convicted criminal and I'll do it again. Yeah. Same as um, famous South African leader Nelson Mandela. Um, so, so uh, going on to uh, uh, UKIP taking over the council, do you think uh, UKIP have uh, this uh, taking over the council might have a connection with Labour being such a bad, bad um, representative? Oh, that, that's almost certain. I think. Uh the success of UKIP has, has been at Labour's expense because Labour was so crap uh, as, a, as an administration. Absolutely fucking appalling on, on a whole number of issues. And they were smashed from 26 seats to four. And that was all because of the secrecy, the arrogance, uh, the, the decisions that they took. On, on a whole number of issues, particularly destroying our environment and building on, on our greenfield sites. Uh, their, their environment on the record is appalling, but their secrecy is even worse. And it was the Labour Council who actually agreed to get a High Court injunction against me uh, to stop me releasing uh, confidential council documents, for which I, I will eventually have to hope for, well, hopefully I won't, but they're, they're going to try to get £20,000 off me in court costs. So they're, they're, they're certainly the two are not unrelated because yeah. I've spent, you know, three years been, been quite a critic of what, what the council here in Thanet's done, which sadly, uh, uh, in that period of time, was a Labour council. Yeah, and they don't like the, the truth being revealed. Well, certainly not in Thanet they don't. Oh. I mean, they moved heaven and earth. Uh, and uh, to, to try to silence me, and uh, mm. they succeeded with that High Court injunction. I mean, I've got information I can't reveal uh, about the uh, incompetence uh, of Fanny Council, uh, which, to mention it to anyone, I could be jailed and fined. And yeah. that's, uh, you know, that's, that's been going on for almost a year now. I've been gagged. Well, uh, at least you succeeded in uh, um, getting cameras into the council meetings. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> that's like, true. Yeah. Thank everybody on... Um, thank everybody for, for that, Ian. Yeah. Um, and on behalf of our fellow, fellow creatures, uh, well done. Thank Thanks you. ever so much. Okay. Thanks. Bye.